Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to be comparing the women in each major Colombian city. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you my opinion on where I believe the most beautiful Colombian women are located. So a lot of videos that you guys see on this topic feature creators who don't really speak Spanish and they'll interview girls on the street or girls who speak fluent English. But I feel like you don't really get to understand Colombian culture unless you've been immersed and you really understand the language. Medellin is such a small portion of the whole entire country, right? This country has so much to offer from the coffee region to the coastal cities, to Ibagué, to Bucaramanga, to Bogota, Cali. Too many people focus too much on Medellin and have Medellin represent like all of Colombia. I kind of want to expel some of the myths and compare the different cities. Keep in mind, I'm going to be talking about skin color, body type, personality, culture, mannerisms, all of these things I've learned talking and interviewing these women from different cities. I'm not gonna be going too much into like sex or hooking up or sexual tourism. You know, my channel isn't really for that, but more for people who are looking to seriously date and looking for a long-term relationship. I believe all of this information, plus all the information I have in my course will help better prepare you guys if you guys are looking to date here. So also, I don't mean to offend. I'm just sharing my personal opinion based on my taste and what I believe my audience will like. So here are some general traits that all Colombians share. Number one, I would say most Colombians are vain, but in a good way where they really care about their appearance and they don't want to leave the house looking like a mess. We are still Colombians. We take care a lot uh, about our appearance. We like to take care of our hair, especially makeup, everything. We like to be dressed up to do everything, even to go out and, and buy milk, like to be ready all the time, you know? Yeah. I know in the US, trying to tell your woman, hey, could you lose a little bit of weight? Or like if you dress this kind of way, can get you in a lot of trouble, people calling you misogynist and all those things. Whereas here, because it's so ingrained into the culture, it's a little more accepted and known that the women want to look good. Una mujer extrovertida, divertida. Empoderada. Empoderada, sí. sí. El mundo dicen que las Colombianas son lindas, pero solo aman por interés. ¿Tú crees que es verdad? No es verdad. No es verdad. Yo creo que hace falta que nos conozcan mejor. Mm, sí, es que la mayoría de los gringos no hablan español y vienen y solo conocen los prepagos. Pero si hablas con una chica en realidad, pues te vas a dar cuenta que no, pues que es muy divertida. Ajá que le gusta hacer planes de salir, conocer personas, o sea, claro, sí. son otras cosas muy diferentes. Keeping a house clean is a really big part of their culture as well. They're taught from a young age that, you know, having the house as a mess looks really, really bad. So they're always like sweeping, mopping, doing the dishes. And if you go to most Colombian houses, they're almost always organized because it's embarrassing. They don't mind preparing something for you if you ask. Colombian culture is very much a culture of service to your family and to elders and to your loved ones. If you ask them, hey, do you mind me making an arepa or whatever, usually they won't give you problems for it. In all of Colombia, family is extremely important. So if you're dating a girl seriously, you're going to meet her family extremely quickly and they're gonna bring you in. But not just their family, their cousins, their friends, the people from the church are gonna be meeting everybody. And I go into a lot more detail on that in the meeting the family portion of my course. So if you guys wanna reach out to me, you can hit me up on WhatsApp here. I'll answer a couple questions, but anything more in debt will have to be through consultation. But if you guys want more information, I highly recommend looking into my course, talking about the different archetypes of women, what it's like dating in different cities, what it's like meeting the family, getting married, getting divorced, everything that you need to know. I'll put all the details down below. Okay, so let's start with Medellin. I would say that Medellin is very tourist friendly. This is where most men come if they're looking to like live in Colombia or I guess looking to date. Spanish isn't really necessary here compared to some of the other cities because I would say that Medellin is slowly becoming gringofied. You're gonna notice that Faisal women have fame all over the world for being some of the most beautiful with their faces. And yes, they have nice, beautiful, curvy bodies, but the only downside to that is that there's a lot of surgery here. Specifically, Medellin seems to be the epicenter of like surgeries for women. I would say that Cali, it's there's a lot of surgery there too, but Medellin is like number one. I would say that Medellin, more so than other parts of the country, are a little more open to dating foreigners because of this foreigner influx that has come between the last few years. Foreigners in Medellin specifically have such a bad rep in the country right now for sexual tourism, gentrifying the city because of raising rent prices. It's, it's kind of a mixed bag. They're more open to it because they're more exposed to it. But also being a foreigner doesn't win you any brownie points anymore because there's so many and you just having an American passport or waving money around isn't that impressive, specifically here in Medellin. Medellin surprisingly has quite a bit of English speakers, not as much as Bogota, but you can find English speakers here. And because there's so much to do in the city, there's always a bunch of 
like nice date spots and things to do here. The Baisa region in general, I would say is very conservative and they're very regionalist, but I would say out of all the Baisa cities, this is probably the most liberal. But some things to be aware of is that there are too many scams and druggings here, specifically in Medellin. Like if you go on a dating apps, man, it's very hard to find like a good woman, even though I know people who have met relationships from dating apps, the risk is too high for me personally, so I wouldn't recommend looking for women on dating apps. Because here in Medellin, there's a lot of like sex workers or working women. A lot of times they'll tell you up front what they do, but sometimes they'll tell you a lot later, like until the end of the date when you're trying to bring them to your house, they'll be like, oh, it costs this much for the night. And then you're just like, well, I just wasted all this time for what? I would say single moms are a huge issue, not just in Medellin, but I would say just all over the country. With the single mom crisis here at 84%, there's a lot of single moms looking at foreigners to bail them out. So what that means, in my opinion, is that you can never be 100% sure of their intentions. Are they with me just for me? Or are they with me playing the part so they can get the citizenship or they can get the money? The gold digger culture here is very pronounced. And it's not just with foreigners, it's also with Colombians. Cali, you see a little bit of it. Barranquilla, I didn't see it too much. You know, Manizales, but without you see it a little bit. But Medellin is the epicenter for gold digger culture. So I have a free guide to Medellin available if you guys are interested. All you gotta do is sign up for my newsletter. I'll give you guys a bunch of great information information about all the different parts of Colombia from the coast to the coffee region. There's a bunch of great information if you're also looking to move here. If you guys are interested in that, I'll put that in the description and the pinned comment down below. Medellin is a very unfaithful city and this applies to the men and the women. When you're dating a paisa, usually here in Bogota, your friends are like, ah, oh, but you gotta be careful that he's a paisa. You don't know if he's dating over other women because right. they have that fame of being very, um, like, promiscuous. And the biggest flaw in my opinion is I would say that Medellin is a very superficial culture and the women here are also known for being very superficial. They're like trophy wives so you can meet people on the street and it's nice you guys are all friendly but the conversation doesn't really get any deeper than that. You can know a lot of people but trying to get into groups is very difficult here in Medellin. Appearance is everything here so you're gonna notice that biases care a lot about what people think of them, what their neighbors think of them, how they look in church, you know making sure they're keeping up with appearances. Pluses or minus you know it's up to you to decide. I would give the women in Medellin a nine just because of the beauty and their values and the accessibility for most men. So let's go to Bogota. I would say here in Bogota is where you're gonna meet the most educated women. Here like we have like the best universities. Actually, there are a lot of people that comes uh, from other cities. They come yes. here to Bogota just to study or just to find uh, a job because in nice. here there are a lot of job opportunities as well. The people with the most money, the highest class people live in Bogota. I would say Bogota specifically has the most English speakers out of all of the country. They're also very open-minded to other cultures because there's a lot of foreigners that live in Bogota. I would say it's the most liberal city out of the whole entire country and you're gonna see a lot of people walking on the street who are dressed up in like rocker uniforms or people who are just like open to individual expression. Most Baisas kind of look the same, they kind of have the same look. Crop top, jeans, sneakers. Whereas in Bogota, you're gonna get a lot more variety because people are coming from all parts of the country. Bogota is so big. They are close to their family, but a lot of people moved from other cities to Bogota. So I would say the more people there are more independent and a little less attached to their family than some of the other cities. And I would say they're not quite as superficial as the Baisas. Yes, they have fame for being not super friendly. You know, like you walk on the street, they're kind of rude. But if you befriend people from Bogota, I hear that they're like friends for life or it's that kind of thing, right? It's more real, the relationships, it's just harder to break into those groups. And I would say that they're also very closed off. Here in Colombia, you're gonna notice that it's a very classist society in almost all of the cities that you go to. You see it a little less in the pueblos, but here in Medellin or Bogota or Cali, Barranquilla, people will divide you based on class. The richer people tend to hang out with their own people and it's very hard to break into those groups unless you know somebody or you do business with them. And I would say that in Bogota, the women are just not as attractive. They're not known for how beautiful they are compared to some of the other cities in the country. I think in, in Medellin, the physical appearance of the woman is more important than yeah. here in Bogota. We have the fame of not being pretty. Rolas doesn't have breasts, they don't have butt either. You go there and you're just gonna find like tablas. <laughs> yeah, but that's because uh, here in Medellin, todo se compra. <laughs> and it suffers from the issue of big city dating, right? Where it's very, very hard to meet people. Apps are probably the main way to do it. But if I were as a foreigner to go there, I would no have no idea where to start. You can go to a church, but if the church has thousands of people, how do you go and meet people? Now I know people through uh, friends that I've met through Manizales and through my channel. I have some friends that there, but in general going to Bogota, 8 million people listed, but they say it's up to like 12 million potentially. How do you meet people in an environment like that? 
How is it dating in Bogota? Do you think it's easy? Do you think it's hard? Well, I think it's hard. Prolos are a little bit more untrustworthy. They are not too open to people. I think the culture makes people a little bit, a little bit more shy in here than vices. If I were to give Bogota a score, I would give them a 7.5 to an 8, depending on what you're looking for. Okay, let's talk about Cali. So I would say Cali has the most curvaceous women out of the whole entire country, for good and for bad. They have all the nice curves, but they are a little bit thicker on the stomach side as well. Most of the population here is on the darker Moreno side. I mean, you're still gonna get some light skin people but that seems to be the minority compared to the rest of Cali. There's a very big black population here and I would say that the most attractive Afro-Colombians that I've ever seen in the country are in Cali. I also personally love the dance culture down there too, the salsa capital of the world. So most of the people that live there love to dance. You hear salsa all over the streets and they are taught to dance from a young age. So if you like to dance, if you're all about that culture, Cali is a really good place to go. I have seen a few gringos there walking around but it's nowhere near the level of like Medellin or Bogota and the gold digger culture that exists in Medellin also exists in Cali. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would give Cali personally around an 8 to an 8.5 depending on your taste. Cartagena. This is where you're going to find the biggest black population that I've seen. They have like the darkest skin that I've seen out of the whole entire country. And I would say that Cartagena is very tourist friendly, but that's kind of like a good and a bad thing, right? So the thing with Cartagena is that most people will only live in Boca Grande or like the old city. Those are like the most expensive parts. That's where everything's popping. But the rest of the city is very underdeveloped and there's a lot of poverty. If you go there and meet someone, it's very hard to know like where they came from, if they come from money or if they're just a tourist or if they're a sex worker because Cartagena and Medellin are pretty much tied right now for being like the biggest uh, sexual tourism hotspots in the country. When people talk about Cartagena, they don't really talk about the beauty of the women too much and I would say it's pretty hard to meet people there who aren't like foreigners or sex workers or other Colombians that are just vacationing there. So I would give Cartagena a six. Not necessarily for how they look but more for like its accessibility. So let's talk about Santa Marta. Santa Marta is a beach city, so you're gonna find that the people there are very chill, they're very laid back. A lot of the people there are all about partying. Somos muy alegres todos, bastante divertidos, bastante espontáneos, yo creo. Mm -hmm. I thought that because it was a beach city, I was gonna encounter a lot of like the darker skin population, but Santa Marta was surprisingly more moreno, almost on like the lighter skin side. And you're gonna find a lot of diversity there, a lot more natural beauty. Yo pensaba que la gente iba a ser más negra como en Cartagena. Pero Aquí hay de todo. Hay monos, hay morenas como tú y pelo liso, pelo sí. eh, claro, canela y me parecen todas lindas, la verdad. Sí, eso me sorprendió. Santa Marta is the vacation spot for most Colombians. A lot of them will skip Cartagena and just go to Santa Marta instead. So you're going to see a lot of people on the streets, but you're not entirely sure if they're from Santa Marta or they're just tourists passing by. It's a very local experience though. So if you don't speak any Spanish, it's going to be very hard to get into the to groups and to meet friends. When I was walking around, I ate the restaurants and I met people. People were very friendly, very nice. A lot of people were smoking weed on the beach and everything. Want like a nice, chill, relaxed vibe, I think. Santa Marta is the place to go. So on a scale of one to 10, I will give Santa Marta a 7.5. So Manizales, you know, I'm really sad that I can't go back at the moment. I love this city. I think that out of all of Colombia, they have the, the most well-dressed people. They're very cultured people. They're very polite. They're very nice. They're very formal. Everywhere in the country, people will say that Manizales, they have educación because when you're walking on the street, the cars will let you pass. People will wave at you. People are just very, very polite. And that's what I personally loved about the city on top of it being extremely sad. In Manizales, you're going to notice that there's a lot more natural beauty and there's a lot less plastic surgery even though you can still see it from here and there. Out of the whole entire country, I've seen the most light-skinned people in Manizales and I think they kind of pride themselves for that too. You know, there's definitely some racists in there as well. I would say that it's a very religious and conservative society. Out of the whole entire country, I would say this is one of the more conservative cities. And I met some hidden gems here and there when I was at the gym. And in general, the women are on the thinner side. They have like a Pueblo mentality. So, they're, you know, they're really into their family and they're very small-minded. This can be both a good thing or a bad thing depending how you look at it. A lot of people that live there think that Manizales is like the best city ever and for good reason, right? I fell in love with the city as well. You're gonna notice that a lot of people that live there, they don't want to leave and they're very attached to their families. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I will give Manizales an 8. Pereira is essentially mini Medellin. They experience a lot of the same culture when it comes to the partying and the superficialness and a lot of webcam models come from Pereira. There's a lot less foreigners here in the Hey Cafetero just in general because if you want to live here, you have to speak Spanish. Why here is so similar to Medellin is that there's just so much plastic surgery in the city. You're going to see some of the 
hottest women that you've ever seen in Colombia in Pereira, but also it comes with all that superficial gold digger culture that Medellin has as well. So if you don't really care about plastic surgery that much, this may be a good city for you. But for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the city. I found them to be also very regionalist. I got some death threats from people from Pereira because I talked badly about the city. I do think the women that are beautiful, but it's just not personally my vibe. It's not quite as light skin as Manizales, but it's not quite as Moreno as a place like Cali. I would say it exists somewhere in the middle. And I would say this is probably the most liberal out of all the coffee region cities. So on a scale of one to 10, I would give Pereira a nine. Okay, going to Armenia. I like Armenia a lot because it felt like a mix of Manizales and Pereira. You have the nice natural beauty, but the people there are on the more Moreno side. Because the closer you get to Cali, the darker the population gets. You have a lot of interracial mixing in Armenia. I noticed that specifically. And I was walking around and you just see some of the most beautiful, classy, nice looking Moreno and Canela skin. Women like kind of like the darker brown skin. There's a lot of natural beauty there, which I really liked. We saw some plastic surgery here and there, but for the most part, it has still had that nice Pueblo feel very conservative the people there are really nice it's very safe and if I personally didn't go to Manizales I would have ended up in Armenia on a scale of 1 to 10 I will give Armenia a 9 and in my opinion the most beautiful Colombian women come from Barranquilla they have everything that I like the brown morena skin the most beautiful faces I've ever seen in the country naturally curving bodies but not on the thicker side more on like the thinner side but they still have the curves they have conservative values it's a religious society they're very well educated there's a lot of people with money there the amount of beautiful women that I saw walking around in the malls was crazy and I think it was just more for my personal taste but because it hasn't been ruined by foreigners yet you still get that really nice local feel Barranquilla isn't really known for like it's tourism spots or it's nightlife. It's more for living. I like to compare it actually to like Florida. It reminds me a lot of Florida from the US. It is a very heavily divided class of society because everybody in the North is like the richer side and it's good living. And then if you go towards the South, it gets a lot poorer. It's like very well divided. But in my opinion, I enjoyed Barranquilla a lot. And if I were to come back to the country to find somebody for like a long-term partner, Barranquilla for me would be the first place I would start. Plus the given fact that because it's not a party city and you need Spanish to get around here, I think it's going to attract only a certain population and it's not going to have all that same party tourism scene like Medellin does. So I think Barranquilla for me is like the hidden gem of Colombia and if I were to give it a scale from 1 to 10, I would give Barranquilla a 10. So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you guys want to contact me, hit me up on WhatsApp here. And if you guys want to be a pro on what it's like dating here in Colombia in general, I highly recommend buying my Dating in Colombia course. I'll leave all the details of that below. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.